One of the biggest struggles that people have when it comes to weight training is understanding how to structure their workout program. And this is understandable because there's so many different training protocols that are out there. There's full body workouts, there's upper lower training splits, there's a push pull legs routine or other variations of a three day split, and there's even four day splits. So with all these different options, it can be very, very confusing. To help eliminate this confusion, we're gonna take a different approach to how we look at training programs. Instead of only giving you a list of exercises to do, I'm also gonna give you the seven key upper body movement patterns that every program must include. That way, if you have to make changes or adjustments to the exercises, you'll be able to do so with good understanding. And in a later video, we'll talk about the key lower body movement patterns that every program must include. So let's start with an overview of what these seven movement patterns are. So we have a horizontal press, horizontal pull, vertical press, vertical pull, a break at the arm, an extension of the arm, and some sort of lateral raise. So one thing you're gonna hear me say a lot is horizontal plane or vertical plane. So the horizontal plane is 90 degrees from your body, and this is where you are pressing in front of you or pulling behind you. And the vertical plane is in line with the rest of your body, where you are pressing something straight overhead or pulling something straight down. So we're gonna start with a horizontal press. And a horizontal press is where you are pushing the weight in front of you. So whether it's a barbell bench press, a dumbbell bench press, or a machine, as long as you are pressing the weight in front of you, then this is a horizontal press. So the opposite of a horizontal push is a horizontal pull. And this is where you are pulling the weight towards you in a horizontal plane. And this can be done with a cable, dumbbell, barbell, or a machine, and it's typically done in a rowing fashion. Next is a vertical push where you're pushing the weight overhead. And this can be done with a dumbbell, barbell, or a machine, and it's typically a shoulder press. Next is a vertical pull, where you are pulling in a vertical plane or in line with the rest of your body. And this can be done with a lat pull-down machine or a pull-up. Next is some sort of arm curl, where you are breaking at the arm and bringing the weight towards your body. So the opposite of the arm curl is some sort of arm extension, and this is gonna be used mainly to train your triceps. Lastly, we're gonna do some sort of arm raise to target the medial or side deltoids. A good starting point is to do one exercise per movement, but to have two workouts in the week where you're training your upper body so you can do different variations of these movements. So here's an example of what I mean by two workouts in the week, all using the same movement patterns, but doing them with different exercises. This can be done with an upper lower training split with a day or two of rest in between. For example, in your first upper body workout of the week, your horizontal press can be a flat dumbbell press, but then your second upper body workout later in the week can be an incline barbell press. So the last thing I wanna emphasize is that the variety of exercises you do should match what muscle groups you wanna target the most. For example, if you want a wide V-shaped back, it's important to target your lats with a wide front pronated grip, either on a pull up or on a pull down. You also wanna use a variety that hits the different muscles in a muscle group. So for example, if you're training your triceps, you wanna make sure you use something like a skull crusher or an overhead extension, where it's gonna be targeting the long head of the tricep, but you also wanna include something that's gonna hit the short head of the tricep, like a rope push down. So now that we understand the seven upper body movements that we need to include, the next question is, how many exercises should we do for each movement? And this is gonna depend on several things, but we're gonna look at three of the main things right now. The first is how many days per week are you gonna be training your upper body? Second is how much time per training session do you have to train? And last is what do you need to make progress? If you're gonna be training your upper body twice per week, as we've shown in the example, then starting with one exercise per movement is a good starting point. If you can only train your upper body once per week, then it makes sense to increase the exercise per movement to two, at least on the large compound movements for things like your chest, back, and shoulders. Another important factor is how much time you have to train. Obviously doing two exercises per movement is gonna take a lot longer than doing one exercise per movement. So there are two good reasons why you should increase the amount of exercises you are doing per movement. And the first is you are no longer seeing progress with what you were doing before. Another reason would be that you're trying to improve certain muscle groups faster than others. Maybe because you feel like they are underdeveloped or they are a weak point. So for example, if you feel like your biceps are not as developed as the rest of your body and you wanna improve them faster, then adding a second exercise to your arm curl is a good idea. So for example, in workout one, you could do a barbell curl and mix that with a hammer dumbbell curl. And then in your second workout, you would do say an incline dumbbell curl mixed with a hammer rope cable curl. 
So if your upper body training includes these key movement patterns, then that's a good sign that you're following a great training program. So that's the end of the video. If you watched it this far, thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed it. So there's gonna be a follow-up video about the key movement patterns related to the lower body. So if you don't wanna miss that, please hit the subscribe button and also turn on post notifications. And do me a big favor, hit the like button and leave a comment below letting me know what you thought about the video, what I could have done better, and what sort of information or what kind of topics you want me to cover in the future. So if you'd like to see videos explaining how to perform exercises with excellent form, then I highly recommend you follow me on Instagram because that's the type of content I'm posting all the time. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.